Welcome friends to a new session on genetics. In this session, we will discuss sex determination in plants and animals and sex linkage, non-disjunction as a proof of chromosomal theory of inheritance. The chromosomal theory of inheritance, genetic mechanisms of sex determination. Let us first see about genetic mechanisms of sex determination. Scientists have worked for several hundreds of years to understand the mechanism of sex determination. For instance, in 335 BC, Aristotle proposed that during intercourse, heat of the male partner determined sex. A male child would form if the male's heat would overwhelm the female's coldness. In contrast, if the female's coldness was too strong or the male's heat was too weak, a female child would be formed. At least in the case of some reptiles, the temperature of the nest determines the sex of the embryo. The sex is determined chromosomally in most animals. Sexually reproducing plants and animals can be classified into two groups. Individuals are alike their gender condition, sexually monomorphic, which we call it as hermaphrodite populations. And individuals are different, sexually polymorphic, we also call it as dioecious species which separate male and female individuals. Botanists employed the term co-sexual to refer the condition where the plants perform both functions. Now let us look into the discovery of X and Y chromosomes. Organisms have morphological sex differences males and females. Generally, Sex chromosomes which contain sex determining genes determine the sex. Thus, chromosomes which determine the sex of an organism are called sex chromosomes, otherwise called allosomes, and other chromosomes are called as autosomes. In humans and many other organisms, the sex chromosomes consist of a pair of chromosomes called the X and Y chromosomes. For example, in humans there are a total of 46 chromosomes present, out of which 44 are autosomes and 2 are called sex chromosomes, that is X chromosome and Y chromosome. A male individual contains 2N, that is 44 autosomes plus XY chromosome. And the Y is male determinant, but the female contains 2N, wherein there are 44 autosomes and 2 X chromosomes, where X is the female determinant. The XX and XY rule differs in different organisms. The sex chromosomes are unique and they came from experiments conducted in 1891 by Hermann Henking, who was a cytologist and who discovered the X chromosome. He found that some wasp sperm cells had 12 chromosomes, while others had only 11, and the mysterious 12th chromosome looked different from all others. He thus named this chromosome as X element to represent its unknown nature. About 10 years later, Clarence Irwin McClung, an American biologist, discovered the role of sex chromosomes in sex determination. He came up with a proposal that the accessory chromosome must influence the sex in a zygote. Then, Walter Stanborough Sutton, who is an American genetist and physician, and also contributed towards the Bowery-Sutton chromosome theory, 
provided experimental proof that supported McClung's hypothesis regarding the accessory chromosome. The X and Y chromosomes were first discovered in beetles in 1906 by Nettie Maria Stevens, the first researcher who described the chromosomal basis of sex. She discovered that cells of male beetles had one pair of chromosome which is very different in appearance from each other but in female beetles had identical looking pairs of chromosomes and named these two chromosomes the X and the Y. She noticed that female beetles differed from males in containing two X chromosomes. The same situation is also found in humans where males are XY and females are XX. Scientists found that one gene, the SRY, meaning sex determining region of the Y, was the master regulator of sex determination and the presence of just this region is sufficient to cause male development. Now, let us look into the sex determination in detail. Majority of plants and animals exhibit sexual mode of reproduction. Some of them are bisexual and some of them are unisexual. Unisex is a predominant feature in higher animals where female and male sexes are distinguished by characteristic structural and functional features. Even many plants exhibit this kind of sexual dimorphism. However, certain variations are also found. All unisexual animals including fishes, insects, birds, frogs and mammals including human beings show XY mechanism of sex determination. Some unisexual plants like Spherocarpus, Melandrium, Coccinia shows XY mechanism. First we will be seeing about sex determination in animals. Initially, we will discuss about sex determination in human beings. In the diploid state, represented as 2n, the chromosome's number in Homo sapiens is 46. In males, 2n is equal to 44 autosomes and xy is the chromosomal pattern. But in females, 44 autosomes and xx is the chromosomal composition. In males, the X chromosomes is euchromatic, which are actively transcribing and most of the regions of Y chromosome are heterochromatic, which are not actively transcribing. Now, it is established that the male determining chromosome is Y and the female determining chromosome is X. Y chromosome is the sex chromosome that carries the genes for male characters and X chromosome carries the genes for female characters. Let us see the inheritance pattern of X and Y chromosomes. During gamete formation, the normal diploid chromosome number is halved. This is called the haploid condition. All the X of a female have 22 autosomes and a single X chromosome. A male produces two types of sperms. One type bears the 22 plus X composition and the other 22 plus Y. Secondly, let us see about sex determination in Drosophila. In Drosophila, the sex determination is by XX and XY mechanism but with a difference when compared to sex determination in humans. Its 2n number is 8. In female, there are 6 autosomes and XX chromosome. But in male, there are 6 autosomes and XY chromosome. But if an insect has 2n composition with 6 autosomes, there is only one X chromosome, then the insect develops as a male. Because in this case, 
It is the balance ratio between autosomal number and sex chromosome number that determines the sex of the individual. Therefore, male sex can be determined even in the absence of Y chromosome. For example, if the composition is 6 autosomes plus XX, it is female. If the composition is 6 autosomes plus XXY, it is a super female. In the case of 6 autosomes plus XY, it is a male. 6 autosomes plus X0, it is a male. And 6 autosomes plus XYY, it is again a super male. Now, let us see sex determination in honeybees. In honeybees, rather than the presence or absence of sex chromosome, sex is determined by fertilization or non-fertilization of X. A virgin queen who has not taken a mating flight produces only male progeny. Now, it is known that 20 percent animal species use a haplodiploid mode of reproduction. In this mode, male progeny develops from unfertilized eggs which are haploid and have one set of chromosomes, while the fertilized honeybee eggs which are diploid and have two sets of chromosomes differentiate into worker bees and queens. Later on, it was discovered that honey bees lack sex chromosomes. Here, according to complementary sex determination hypothesis, the single sex determination locus, in short known as SDL, determines the sexual fate. Fertilized eggs that are heterozygous at SDL develop into females, while Fertilized X that are homozygous at SDL develops into diploid males. Although fertile males are produced from the queen's unfertilized haploid X which are hemizygous at SDL, homozygosity at SDL is lethal and the diploid males are eaten by worker bees shortly after hatching. Now, let us see about sex determination in plants. The genetic control of sex determination is well understood in animal systems, but the mechanisms underlying sex determination in plants are largely unknown. Sex inheritance and sex chromosomes in plants are strikingly similar to those in animals. In addition, plants are expected to contribute our understanding of the separate sexes and of sex hormones. Before discussing the sex determination in plants, it is helpful to briefly outline the known facts about gender conditions in plants. The mechanism of sex determination has been studied in a large number of plants. In most of the plants, the sex is controlled by the Y chromosome as in the case of human. If Y chromosome is present, the plant will be a male. If Y chromosome is absent, the plant will be female. Sex reversal has been reported among plants. It has been found that the plants functioning as males may be converted into females by the environmental changes. For example, in hemp called as cannabis sativa, which is a dioecious plant with an XY mechanism of sex determination and that are generally planted from May to July gives the female and male sexes in one is to one ratio. But later plantings results in a greater percentage of females. In extreme cases, all the plantings develop into females. The variation in the length of the day is thought to be the factor responsible for the reversal of sex in these plants. Let us now discuss about sex determination in higher plants. In higher plants, the sex is determined as per the theory of heterogamesis proposed in 1906 by Karl Korenz, a German botanist and geneticist. According to this theory, only one sex 
either the male or female is heterogametic produces two types of gametes and each type determining a different sex on fertilization. XX, XY type or ligase type is such type of sex determination. Let us understand more about XX, XY type or ligase type. This type of sex determination was first studied in the milkweed bug ligase. There are two different patterns of sex determination in ligase type. The first pattern is female homogametic and male heterogametic. In this type of sex determination, the female is sexually homozygous or homogametic having two X chromosomes. The male is sexually heterozygous or heterogametic having X and Y chromosomes. The female produces only one type of egg, each carrying an X chromosome in addition to the autosomes. The male produces two types of pollen, one type carrying the autosomes with one X chromosome and the other type carrying the autosome with one Y chromosome. Fertilization by a sperm with A plus X chromosome results in a female and by a sperm with A plus Y chromosome results in a male, example in the case of angiosperms. The second pattern is female heterogametic and male homogametic. In this mode of sex determination, the female is sexually heterozygous or heterogametic having X and Y chromosomes, while the male is sexually homozygous or homogametic having two X chromosomes. Thus, the male plant produces similar type of pollens, each with an X chromosomes, while the female produces two types of X, the X type which on fertilization develops into male and Y type which on fertilization develops into female. The third pattern is female homogametic and male heterogametic that is X O type sex determination. Some plants have been discovered with X O type of sex determination. In this case, the female produces only one type of egg which carries autosomes and X chromosome, but the male produces two types of pollens. One type carries autosomes and one X chromosome, A plus X, and the other type carry only the autosomes, A plus zero. Fertilization by a pollen of the first type, that is A plus X, results in a female, and with the second type, A plus zero, results in a male. Example, Dioscoria sinulata. Now let us look into sex linkage, non-disjunction as a proof of chromosomal theory of inheritance. There has been a long years of experiments and observations which led to the conclusion that chromosomes are the bearers of hereditary materials. It was proved that female and male contribute equally to the production of offsprings. Further confirmation about the exact knowledge of heredity was furnished by Mendel's experiments. More recently, cases have arisen in which the genes for characters and the chromosomes have the same method of distribution. Finally, it was demonstrated that the distribution between specific genes and specific chromosomes in such a way that the argument of the cell as a whole cannot be applied. The experimental and cytological evidence in the case of non-disjunction enhances such a demonstration. Now let us look into the fact of non-disjunction. Generally during gametogenesis, the homologous chromosomes of each pair separates out which is referred to as disjunction and are 
equally distributed in the daughter cells. In 1930, Calvin Blackman Bridges, an American scientist who is known for the flyrome experiment, found that very rarely in Drosophila, X chromosomes fail to separate and both the X chromosomes are transmitted to one of the daughter cells. So, some of the female gametes contain two X chromosomes while the others are without any chromosomes. Thus, there is an unequal distribution of chromosomes in the daughter cells. The failure of separation of homologous chromosomes is called non-disjunction. This can occur either during mitosis or meiosis or embryogenesis. It always produces cells with wrong chromosomal numbers. Non-disjunction was also discovered in man and datura. There are different types of non-disjunction. The non-disjunction can be classified into four main types. They are mitotic non-disjunction, meiotic non-disjunction, primary non-disjunction and secondary non-disjunction. First, let us see about mitotic non-disjunction. The failure of separation of homologous chromosomes during mitosis is called mitotic non-disjunction. It occurs after fertilization. It may happen during first cleavage or second cleavage. For example, the human zygote contains 46 chromosomes. If the non-distinction occurs during the first cleavage, one blastomere receives 45 chromosomes and the other receives 47 chromosomes. So, two cell lines are produced. If it occurs during second cleavage or afterwards, three cell lines are produced. The complements of three cell lines are 46, 45 and 47. The second case is meiotic non-disjunction. The failure of separation of homologous chromosomes during meiosis is called meiotic non-disjunction. It occurs during gametogenesis. As a result, two types of gametes are produced. One type of gamete contains 22 chromosomes and the other type of gamete contains 24 chromosomes instead of the normal 23 chromosomes. When the gamete with 22 chromosomes is fertilized by a sperm containing 23 chromosomes, a zygote with 45 chromosomes are produced. When a gamete with 24 chromosomes is fertilized by a normal gamete, the zygote contains 47 chromosomes. Now, let us look into the third one that is primary non-disjunction. Non-disjunction occurring in the gonads of normal organisms is called primary non-disjunction. This is depicted in the following table. If non-disjunction occurs during meiosis, it is termed primary non-disjunction if it occurs during the first division. Now, the fourth one is secondary non-disjunction. The non-disjunction occurring in organisms which are the results of a previous non-disjunction or if it occurs during the second division is called secondary non-disjunction. Aneuploids are frequently inviable because of the genetic imbalance that results due to having some messages for an enzyme that would normally be coded for by one message in diploid individuals. The exception to this in humans is when aneuploidy is the result of sex chromosome non-disjunction. An excellent example of secondary non-disjunction is Klinefelter syndrome in humans. Klinefelter syndrome is a set of symptoms that result from two or more X chromosomes in males. The extra chromosome is retained because of a non-disjunction event during gametogenesis. In this case, the X and Y or two X sex chromosomes fail to separate, producing a sperm with an X and a Y chromosome or an egg with two X chromosomes. Fertilizing a normal X egg with this sperm 
produces an XXY offspring. That is the clean filter condition. Fertilizing a double X egg with a normal sperm also produces an XXY offspring. Again, the same condition. Another mechanism for retaining the extra chromosome is through a non-disjunction event during meiosis 2 in the egg. In this case, an X and an X fail to separate, so an XX egg is produced, which when fertilized with a Y sperm yields XXY offspring. This XXY chromosome arrangement is one of the most common genetic variations from the XY karyotype occurring in about 1 in 500 live male births. Primary non-disjunction in Drosophila. In Drosophila, eye color is a sex-linked character as the genes are located on the sex chromosomes. Red eye color represented by capital W is dominant over white eye color represented by small w, small w. When a white eyed female is crossed with a red eyed male, the F1 contains red eyed females and white eyed males. But Bridges noticed that about one fly in a population of 2500 to 3500 flies of F1 generation has an unexpected eye color that is white dyed female and red dyed males. Bridges explained that the white dyed exceptional females must have received both the X chromosomes from the mother. Similarly, the red dyed exceptional males must have received their X chromosomes from their father. This is possible only when the two X chromosomes of the mother carrying white type gene fail to separate during gametogenesis and pass together to one gamete and the other gamete without an X chromosome. The failure of separation of XX chromosomes in the white type female parent is known as primary non-disjunction. The female offspring formed from the ovum containing XX chromosome is called primary non-disjunction female. Next, bridges cross the non-disjunction white tied female represented by XXY with a normal red dyed male represented by XY. Here also, the XX chromosome failed to separate from one another. The failure of separation of XXY chromosome in the exceptional white tailed female is known as secondary non-disjunction. Due to secondary non-disjunction, the female produces four types of eggs. When these ova are fertilized by normal sperms of red dyed male, eight types of offspring are produced. The XX egg fertilized with Y sperm gives an XXY white-eyed non-disjunctional female. The Y egg by the Y sperm gives a zygote which is not at all viable. Let us summarize the foregoing discussion of sex determination in plants and animals. Scientists have worked for several hundreds of years to understand the mechanism of sex determination. Aristotle proposed that during intercourse, the heat of the male partner determined the sex. It was true in the case of some reptiles. Later, scientists proved that sex is determined chromosomally in most animals. Organisms have morphological sex difference as males and females. Chromosomes which determine the sex of an organism are called sex chromosomes or allosomes and other chromosomes are called as autosomes. In humans and many other organisms, the sex chromosomes consist of a pair of chromosomes 
called the X and Y chromosomes. A male individual contains 2N represented by 44 autosomes plus XY and the Y is male determinant, but the female contains 2N wherein there are 44 autosomes plus XX where X is the female determinant. The XX and XY rule differs in different organisms. Sex inheritance and sex chromosomes in plants are strikingly similar to those in animals. In addition, plants are expected to contribute our understanding of the separate sexes and of sex hormones. The XX and XY rule differs in different organisms. Non-disjunction is a proof of chromosomal theory of sex determination. Bridges' hypothesis was that chromatids fail to separate normally during anaphase of meiosis 1 or 2, resulting in non-disjunction. This can occur either during mitosis or meiosis or embryogenesis. Now I am giving you certain assignments to work out. First one is describe sex determination in humans. Second, explain how the observation of cytologists and genetists provided the basis for the chromosome theory of inheritance. Third one is describe the contributions of scientists to prove chromosomal inheritance. Fourth one, distinguish between a heterogametic sex and a homogametic sex. And fifth, explain how the observations of cytologists and genetists provide the basis for the chromosome theory of inheritance. I am also giving you certain references for your further reading. The first one is titled Non-Disjunction as Proof of the Chromosomal Theory of Inheritance Part 1, Genetics. It is written by Calvin C. B. in the year 1966, the pages are from 1 to 52. The second one is entitled Non-Disjunction as Proof of the Chromosomal Theory of Inheritance, Part 2, Genetics, again authored by Calvin C. B. in the year 1916, the pages are from 107 to 163. A third reference is with the title an Introduction to Genetic Analysis, 7th edition, published from New York and it is authored by Griffiths, Miller, Suzuki, Leventine and Gulbert in the year 2000. The fourth reference is entitled Chromosomes and Heredity. It is in the American Naturalist, volume 44, pages 449 to 496. It is authored by Morgan T. H. in the year 1910. A fifth reference is Biology, 7th edition. It is authored by Campbell R. in the year 2012. Also, I am giving you certain websites for your uh, further reference. The first site is www.gentix.org. The second one is theagricos.com. Thank you for watching this session. See you next time. Until then, bye.